Hey guys, welcome to video 73. If you remember from the last video, we looked at stage 3 of the preamp section of the Marshall Plexi, and we had this direct coupled arrangement between two triodes, where effectively the first triode established a bias voltage on the grid of the second triode, and that requires to modify our analysis approach a little bit to find the Q point for the second triode. Well, today we're going to expand on that a little bit just to make sure that there's no confusion confusion or questions about how to analyze a triode when you do have an external bias applied to the grid. So let's go on over and take a look at the circuit we're going to be dealing with, which is a triode with a voltage divider connected to the grid. Now we're going to start our analysis the usual way by finding the DC load line, but uh, why don't we just deal with this voltage divider first here. Uh, all we need to do is find our grid voltage, which equals the Thevenin voltage for this network, which is VPP times R2 over R1 plus R2. So that's 250 volts times 270K divided by 1 meg plus 270K or 1270. So it's 250 volts times 0.21, which gives us about 53 volts on the grid of our triode. So we've got plus 53 volts here. Now with this bias voltage determined, let's go ahead and find the endpoints for our DC load line. As usual, VPK cutoff is VPP which is 250 volts and IP sat is VPP over RP plus RK so it's 250 volts divided by 12K plus 12K is 24K and that gives us about 10.4 milliamps so let's find these two points. 10.4 uh, milliamps is here and 250 volts right here. There's our DC load line. The next step is to plot our biasing line and we'll start by making this little table where we choose VG K and find the resulting plate current but remember because we have a bias voltage applied to the grid we modify our IP equation such that IP equals VG minus VGK divided by RK and again I can choose any values for VGK I want one of the most convenient is VGK equals zero so VG is our bias voltage 53 volts minus zero is in this case just 53 volts divided by 12 K ohms and that gives us 4.4 milliamps so we'll fill that in here and now we want to find another convenient curve to do our next point I'm gonna choose VGK equals negative 18 volts that's this curve right over here so VGK is negative 18 volts the resulting plate current is 53 volts minus negative 18 which is plus 18 volts divided by whoops 12 K ohms and that gives us 71 volts divided by 12 K which is about 5.9 milliamps so here's our second point and now let's change our color to green we'll locate these two points and plot our bias line our first point is on the VGK equals 0 volt curve that's this curve and 4.4 milliamps on that curve is right here our second point is on the VGK equals negative 18 volt curve so we'll find 5.9 milliamps and the intersection is right here so let's draw that bias line and 
here we go. Now, I don't think I was real clear about this in the previous video, so I want to emphasize here that this first point at VGK is zero with an IP of 4.4 milliamps is located on the VGK equals zero curve at 4.4 milliamps. The second point is over here on our VGK equals negative 18 volt curve at a current of 5.9 milliamps. And now switching over to purple and sketching the Q point in here. It looks like we've got an IPQ of about 5 milliamps. And coming down from the Q point, it looks like about maybe 138 volts for our VPK Q value. So let's clean up our workspace here a little bit and we'll get ready to do our small signal and large signal AC analysis. Oops, don't want to delete that, but let's get this and this, this, and we're almost there. There we go. All right, now we'll switch back to blue and let's find our large signal load resistance, which is R prime L. That's equal to RP in parallel with RL. So we've got 12K in parallel with 47K, which works out pretty close to 10K ohms. All right, now our small signal plate resistance, R prime P, is equal to R prime L in parallel with little rp. So we've got 10k in parallel with 10k. So we've got about 5k ohms for our small signal plate resistance. And these values were taken uh, assuming our IPQ of 5 milliamps, 138 volts for BBKQ from the 12AU7 data sheet down here on the average characteristics curve. And I know these things are a pain to work with, but what choice do we have? Here they are. All right, so coming back to our circuit, let's go ahead and determine our voltage gain. So we've got AV equals negative GM times R prime P. So our transconductance is 1.6 millimoles times R prime P 5k ohms, which gives us a voltage gain of about negative eight. It's pretty low, but that's to be expected from a 12AU7. This is a low mu tube. Well, it's considered medium mu, but 16 is you know not very high. And remember the voltage gain is always gonna be less than the mu of the tube you're using. All right, the input resistance of this circuit, Rn, is the Thevenin resistance of the voltage divider. So that's going to be R1 in parallel with R2. So we've got one meg ohm in parallel with 270k ohms, which gives us an input resistance of about 213k ohms. All right, now let's go ahead and find the limits for our AC load line, IP sat is IPQ plus VPKQ divided by R prime L. So we got five milliamps plus 138 volts divided by 10K ohms. So we end up with five milliamps plus 13.8 milliamps for a total of 18.8 milliamps for IC, IP sat, um, <laughs> not IC, we're not dealing with transistors. And finally, VPK cutoff is VPKQ plus IPQ times R prime L, 138 volts plus five milliamps times 10k ohms is 138 volts plus 50 volts, which is 188 volts. 
So switching to red, turn on our line drawing tool. Our first point, 18.8 .8 milliamps is about here. And there's our AC load line. And as always, because I love you guys, I compiled this into a nice, neat version, which you'll see here. So I'll give you a second to check this out. And now let's go on over to the next page, and we'll look at some experimental and P-SPICE analysis results for this circuit. The theoretical results of our analysis are shown boxed in blue. The measured values I got after I built this circuit are shown in red, and I did a P-SPICE analysis as well. Those results are shown in green. Now, we calculated a plate current of 5 milliamps. I built the circuit got 4.8 milliamps and a p-spice analysis also gave 4.8 milliamps. Our uh, drop across the plate resistor assuming 5 milliamps would have been 60 volts uh, the actual circuit dropped 58 volts and p-spice would have given 58 volts as well. Our VPK value 138 volts is from the load line analysis Using KVL and the voltage drops across these resistors, it would have come out to 130. But we know we're always going to have a little bit of discrepancy when we're doing a graphical analysis. So somewhere in between these two values is the correct value. And the experimental value was 130 volts, 34 volts. Piece by said 135. And you can see the rest of the values are in really good agreement. Our calculated voltage gain was negative 8. The measured voltage gain was negative 10.8, and P-SPICE said 10.9. So P-SPICE gives nice, reliable uh, results in the analysis of this kind of circuit. And I thought I would uh, do a screen capture of the input and output voltages for VN equals 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak at 1 kilohertz. We do get uh, a little over 10, almost 11 volts peak-to-peak -peak on the output, so I round that off to a gain of about... 10 or 11 and if we overdrive it a bit by applying an input voltage of 10 volts peak to peak this is what our resulting output looks like we get about 93 volts peak to peak we're reaching a positive maximum value of 40 volts on the output the negative peak is minus 52.7 volts so we are seeing the classic squashing and stretching the asymmetry of the output voltage that's characteristic of these single-ended class A amplifiers, whether they're vacuum tubes, transistors, BJTs, MOSFETs, what have you. And since I haven't left you guys any homework problems to do for a while, I decided I'd throw one in here. So coming on over here, we've got the uh, voltage divider biased triode. This time we're using a 12AX7 and what I'd like you guys to do is, you know, determine the DC, AC load lines, voltage gain, input resistance, all the usual things for this amplifier. And uh, that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time around.